Hello students, welcome to the another lecture of the engineering chemistry course. In the last class, what we have discussed, just have a quick recap of that. In the last class, we have discussed about the types, theories and the mechanism of the lubrication, in which we have discussed mainly the three types of theories of lubrication, that is thick film lubrication which is also called fluid film or the hydrodynamic lubrication second one is the thin film lubrication which is also called as a boundary lubrication and third one is the extreme pressure lubrication in our previous class we have discussed all type of mechanisms in detail now in the today's class we will going to discuss about the properties of lubricants so let us start with the properties of the lubricants. The properties of lubricants are classified in two categories, physical properties as well as the chemical properties. The physical properties of lubricant includes cloud and pore point, flash and fire point, viscosity and viscosity index, oiliness, emulsification, specific gravity and volatility while the chemical properties includes neutralization number, carbon residue, ash content, aniline point, iodine value, saponification value, precipitation number and the corrosion stability. Out of these all properties we will going to discuss some of the important properties of the lubricants. So let us start with the first property of the lubricant that is cloud and pore point. So what is the cloud and pore point? Actually when oil is cooled slowly the temperature at which it becomes cloudy or hazy in appearance it is called the cloud point of the lubricating oil. That means the cloud point of the lubricating oil is the temperature at which solidification of lubricant starts while the temperature at which the oil ceases to flow or pour is called the pore point that means it is the temperature at which the solidification of lubricating oil completes that means the lubricating oil completely solidify the temperature is known as the pore point so we can say that the cloud point is the temperature at which solidification of oil is started while the pore point is the temperature at which the solidification of the oil completed now how we determine the cloud and pore point of the given lubricating oil? For the determination of cloud and pore point of the given lubricating oil, the cloud and pore point apparatus is used. This is the construction diagram of the cloud and pore point apparatus. The main components of the cloud and pore point apparatus are cloud and pore point tube, air jacket and the cooling bath. So first is the cloud and pore point tube. This is the cloud and pore point tube. It is made up of the glass and has standard dimensions height around 12 cm, diameter around 3 cm. This is also known as the flat bottom tube. This cloud and pore point tube is placed in this inner jacket. This is generally made up of the steel or the aluminum. And this space is called the air jacket. So this aluminum jacket which is we call the inner jacket is the air jacket basically. The cloud and pore point tube is enclosed in this metal tube which is known as the air jacket. Third, one, third main component is the cooling bath. This is the cooling bath. This is the cooling bath. This is actually a jar which is filled with a freezing mixture and have a thermometer for the indication of the temperature. So two thermometers are placed in the cloud and pore point apparatus. One is placed in the cooling bath, second one is placed in the cloud and pore point tube. In the cooling bath, the cooling mixture or the freezing mixture is filled. This cooling mixture may be used depending upon the temperature required for example if we want the temperature in the cooling bath 10 degree centigrade so we can use water and ice mixture if we want it minus 10 degree centigrade then we can fill in the cooling bath ice plus sodium chloride mixture 
सो डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द टेम्परेचर अप टू विच वी वॉन्ट टू डिटरमाइन द रीडिंग्स सो अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस टेम्परेचर रेंज वी कैन यूज द फ्रीजिंग मिक्सचर इन द कूलिंग बाथ now first the cloud and pore point tube this cloud and pore point tube is half filled with the sample of lubricating oil thermometers are introduced into the oil and cooling bath use of freezing mixture depends upon the sample oil and the temperature at which we want to determine the cloud and pore point now as the cooling takes place via the air jacket the temperature of oil falls the temperature at which the cloudiness is first noticed represented by the cloud point now the cooling is continued the temperature at which the oil ceases to flow is the pore point okay now how we uh, how we notice the uh, oil is ceases to flow actually we take the cloud and pore point tube and turn turn it in the horizontal position if while turning it in the horizontal position the oil does not uh, flows that means pore point occurs now what is the significance of the cloud and pore point basically the cloud and pore point indicates the minimum working temperature range of the lubricant and stability of the lubricant in cold conditions because it indicates the temperature minimum temperature up to which the lubricating oil persists in the liquid conditions so it can use as a lubricant up to that temperature so lubricants used in a machine working at the low temperature should possess low pore point otherwise solidification of lubricant may cause jamming of the machine so basically the cloud in pore point indicates the minimum working temperature range of the lubricating oil it has been found that the presence of the impurity like wax in the lubricating oil increases its pore point cloud in pore point have importance in those machines which are required to start and operate at low or sub zero temperatures like refrigerator plants and the aircraft engines so basically in all we can conclude that the cloud and pore point of the lubricating oil gives an idea up to which up to the uh, which minimum temperature the lubricating oil can work as a proper lubricant now second property is the flash and fire point generally when lubricating oils are used in the machinery all the lubricating oils are generally the hydrocarbon oils or the organic compounds which on vaporizing gives inflammable vapors thus for a good lubrication a lubricating oil should not volatilize under the operating condition if however they volatilize the vapors formed should not catch the fire under the working condition so it should form inflammable vapors only at the temperature beyond the working temperature of the machine so basically the flash and fire point are the temperatures which indicates the maximum working temperature range of the lubricating oil the flash point is the lowest temperature at which the lubricating oil gives enough vapors that ignite for a moment when a small flame is brought near it that means when hydrocarbon oil is started to vaporize the vapors can get the catch the fire so the flash point is the temperature at which the lubricating oil gives enough vapors that ignite for a moment that means just vaporization has started now if we continue the heating then the fire point is the temperature at which the vapors of the oil burns continuously for at least 5 second when a tiny flame is brought near it generally fire point is 5 to 40 degree centigrade higher than the flash point so basically the flash point is the temperature when just the vaporization of the hydrocarbon oil is started while the fire point is the temperature when which it gives enough vapor to catch the fire that is why these are the points which indicates the maximum working temperature range of the lubricating oil now 
coming towards the determination of the flash and fire point. For the determination of flash and fire point, mainly three types of apparatuses are used. First is the Abel flash fire point apparatus. It is used for the oil which have the flash point below 120 degree Fahrenheit. Second one is the Cleveland's open cup apparatus. It is used to find out the flash point of fuel oil and other oils having flash point below 175 degree Fahrenheit. Now, third one is the Penske Martin's apparatus. It is used for the oil which possesses flash point above 120 degree Fahrenheit. So, basically, Abel's flash point apparatus is used for the lubricating oil which are having the flash point below 120 Fahrenheit. The Cleveland apparatus is used which are having the flash point below 170 Fahrenheit. And Penske Martin apparatus is used mainly for the lubricating oils which have the flash and fire point above 120 Fahrenheit. That means generally 120 to 175 Fahrenheit range we are using the Penske Martin apparatus for the determination of the flash and fire point. Now the determination of flash and fire point with the help of Penske Martin's flash and fire point apparatus. This is the construction diagram of the flash and fire point Penske Martins apparatus. The main components of this apparatus are oil cup, shutter, flame exposure device and the air bath. First is the oil cup. This is the oil cup. Is this oil cup is about 5 cm in the diameter and 5.5 cm deep capacity of oil cup is 50 ml and we have a mark oil mark here which indicates the 50 ml oil filling the lid of the oil cup this lid of oil cup consists four openings through one of these passes a thermometer this is the first opening through which we can insert the thermometer in it second opening is for introducing the test flame this is for the test flame second opening through third opening stereo passes this is the third opening for the stereo while the fourth opening is for the air so air and the flame openings are here thermometer is here and the stereo is here so this is the structure of the oil cup now second important component is the shutter this shutter is a lever mechanism provided at the top of the cup by moving the shutter this by moving the shutter opening in the lid opens and flame is dipped into it when we move this shutter flame is introduced from here thereby bringing the flame over the oil surface third one is the flame exposure device it is a small flame this small flame connected to the shutter by a lever mechanism fourth is the air bath oil cup is surrounded by its oh this oil cup is surrounded by the air jacket or the air bath which is heated electrically and connected to the electricity so this is the construction of the Penske Martin's flash and fire point apparatus. Now, how we determine the flash and fire point using this apparatus? First of all, oil cup and other parts of the apparatus are thoroughly cleaned. Now, the test, uh, the test oil is filled in the oil cup to the level of mark. Up to here, this level of mark, 50 ml oil is filled in the oil cup, a thermometer stator device and the flame exposure are carefully inserted at the opening of the oil cup. The apparatus is homogeneously heated electrically. When the temperature rises to within the range of the expected flash point, at every 1 degree centigrade rise of temperature, flame is introduced from here for a moment by working the shutter. The temperature at which a distinct flash appears inside the cup by introducing the flame is noted down as the flash point. The heating is continued 
till after continuing and the test flame is applied as before that means after every 1 degree centigrade we apply the test flame from here when the oil ignites and continues to burn for at least 5 seconds the temperature reading is recorded as the fire point so basically we are uh, heating the oil through the air jacket 50 ml oil is filled in this oil cup now in the expected range of the flash and fire point we start to note it down the temperature and introduce the flame over the oil cup using the shutter mechanism when we see we observe the flash by introducing the flame from here the temperature is noted down as a flash point while after some time when we observe the tiny flame here then it, the temperature noted down as the fire point now what is the significance of flash and fire point basically the flash and fire point gives an idea about the maximum working temperature range of the lubricating oil these points are indicative of volatility of the lubricating oil and tendency of oil to burn in the engine these points ensure safety against fire hazards during storage transport and use of lubricating oil because when the machinery parts moving over each other the heat energy is generated due to their movement so during working the temperature may increase so we must know the flash and fire point of the given lubricating oil before using it as a lubricant a good lubricating oil always have a high flash and fire point so what we have discussed in today's class we have discussed about the properties of lubricants physical properties as well as the chemical properties in the physical properties we have discussed two important properties of the lubricating oil cloud and pore point and the flash and fire point basically the cloud and pore point determines the minimum working temperature range of the lubricating oil that means it indicates the suitability of lubricating oil in colder conditions while flash and fire point determines the maximum working temperature range of the lubricating oil that means it determines or it indicates the suitability of the lubricating oil in hotter conditions now it's time for the learning check read the question on your in, uh, on your screen and think about its answer in our next live class we will discuss the answer of this question in detail why in case of hydrocarbon oils it is necessary to determine the flash and fire point before using it as a lubricant why it is necessary think for that till then thank you take good care of yourself and keep enjoy e-learning at home thank you